back and it is the Terror Report and it is CIUT 89.5 FM and we're proud to be talking today with the former Prime Minister of Rwanda, Fostan Tugiri Mungu. Um, Mr. Uh, Prime Minister Tugiri Mungu, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Uh, we we're very uh, glad to be talking to you today because um, the uh, there's a week or two ago now, uh, uh, Kofi Annan, who had been for many years was the uh, Secretary General of the United Nations, um, he had a significant role to play in the in the crisis and tragedy and ugliness that happened in Rwanda in the years 1990 to 1994, but, but very particularly in the year 1994. And you uh, lived through that uh, as a political leader and then later as a prime minister. And I know that, uh, and I want our listeners to know that uh, you do uh, have a Twitter account, and I urge people, Fostan Tugiri Mungo, go to that uh, because you have been following things closely, I note. And you had some thoughts, questions about uh, at the time of his death, I think you noted that um, he must have had many he had a lot of information, and I guess we could use the word secrets that he did not share. So that was my starting point. What, what, what are your thoughts about the role of Kofi Annan in the uh, matter of Rwanda? Well, uh, Kofi Annan, in the first place, I think I have to explain uh, to your listeners that Mr. Kofi Annan is an African. The entire world expected of him to be having a knowledge, an entire knowledge of what is the African continent and what would be the result to decisions he would probably have wished to take as far as Rwanda was concerned. Mm -hmm. He did not do that. From 1990, when RPF, it means Rwandan Patriotic Front, attacked my country, in September, in September, no, I mean October 1st, 1990, we started with a lot of political problems uh, of uh, killing people in different areas. People were killed by the RPF, I mean, mm -hmm. until such a period that uh, we decided that we have to negotiate with the attackers. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, on the 6th of April 1996, 94 rather, mm -hmm. the president of Rwanda was killed. At that time, Mr. Kofi Annan was uh, uh, Deputy Secretary General of the uh, United Nations uh, in charge of uh, uh, peacekeeping forces worldwide. Mm -hmm. So, of course, he has also been uh, in a position to send, uh, I will call them blue helmet to Rwanda. And unfortunately, in 1994, at that particular date of uh, the 6th of April 1994, two presidents were assassinated by RPF. Yes. The president of Rwanda and the president of Burundi. Instead of, instead of, to make sure that uh, the situation does not become a, a chaos, they rather favor, favor, favor the RPF to continue killing my compatriots, mm -hmm. the Rwandan citizens. And Mr. Kofi Annan failed to influence uh, the United Nations and particularly the Security Council to increase the peacekeeping forces to prevent the genocide from taking place. Instead, they withdraw the soldiers who were in Rwanda, I mean the United Nations soldiers. They were authorized to leave Rwanda and maintain the situation of chaos, which led us to the genocide, mm -hmm. meaning the Rwandan genocide indeed, because all Rwandan Hutus and Tutsis were killed. That's one. Mm -hmm. Second, in 1997, you have to remember that Mr. Kofi Annan was elected as a, a Secretary General of the UN. 
1997, LPF attacked the refugees in Congo, and they went on killing refugees until even they reached Kinshasa, the capital of Congo, where they have established their own government. Mr. Kabare, who is today the Minister of Defense in Rwanda, became became chief of staff of the Congolese army. Just imagine. Mm -hmm. So, for me, he failed to prevent the genocide in Rwanda or to influence the United Nations to, to stop the genocide in Rwanda. And he influenced the killing of refugees in the Congo bushes and the forest and the kind of uh, tropical bush until Kagame managed to take the Congo country as his own property. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, I cannot, frankly, in my own position today, as a former Prime Minister of Rwanda, a witness of what has happened in my country, uh, tell to the world that Mr. Kofi Annan has uh, rendered or has given uh, or tried to influence mm -hmm. uh, the United Nations to find a solution to what has happened in Central Africa, meaning Congo, Rwanda, and particularly other countries surrounding Rwanda like Burundi. Mm -hmm. So, for me, I think that he failed, and there's no way I can now uh, mm -hmm. pretend to appreciate the job he has uh, done. And then it is not only that. You will also have to remember that uh, in 1995, you know, mm. there has been a genocide in a place called Kibeho. Kibeho is in the southern part of Rwanda. This was on 21st. Of, uh, of April 1995. Mm -hmm. RPF killed more than 80,000 displaced people who came from the north of Rwanda and they were put in a camp near the border of Burundi in the southern part of Rwanda. And Kagame decided to simply go into that camp and kill people to make them free. He killed more than 80,000. Yes, I was there. Uh, yeah, I want and to mention that... that the decision taken by the United Nations while Mr. Kofi Annan was uh, also busy keeping forces was to simply keep silence. No condemnation whatsoever of these killings. Let me finish this. Sure. I know, and you know too, that uh, in Sibrenisa, uh, uh, Sibrenisa was in, in, let me call, uh, where Mr. Uh, Mr. Milosovic was president. Yes, of Yugoslavia, yes. Uh, you remember what is the country? In any case, mm -hmm. 6,000 Muslims were killed there by the troops involved, I mean, yes, by the troops of uh, Milosovic. The United Nations decided to call it a genocide. The United Nations refused to call genocide. 8,000 refugees killed in southern part of Rwanda by RPF army under the order of Mr. Kagame. And uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Kofi Annan did not say anything at all. You know, mm -hmm. Mr. Boutros also had uh, his own problems. The Americans did not like him. They used to call him French, and mm -hmm. he was replaced in 2001 by Mr. Kofi Annan. Mm -hmm. So it went on and on and on until people were killed in Congo. Mm -hmm. It went on until Mr. Kagame simply organized his power in Rwanda while he was kind of a chosen leader of uh, the whole part of uh, Central Africa trying to go to Burundi to kill people.
killing people in, in Congo, what they call the uh, uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, and of course keeping on killing people in Rwanda, assassinated, assassinated some leaders like uh, Mr. Fenda Shonga and many others in the, our country. And we were afraid to leave the government and to settle now in Belgium, you know. So the silence and the complicity of the United Nations through Mr. Kofi Annan is real. I don't invent anything. Yeah. I think I have to stop here. Uh, we're speaking to the former Prime Minister of Rwanda, uh, Fostan Togiri Mungu, and uh, you noted the date. Uh, uh, your dear colleague, uh, Mr. Sendashanga, uh, it was his voice and yours uh, who raised, began to speak uh, to the power of the army, and it led to his assassination in Kenya, and you yourself had to leave the country for fear of your life. Am, am I right? Of course, yes. Of course, yes. And unfortunately, I will have to tell to your listeners who was Mr. Sendashonga. Mr. Sendashonga was formerly Minister of Interior, uh, starting from 1994, just after genocide. We were, uh, you know, government together. Uh, from the 17th of uh, uh, July until both of us resigned on the 28th of uh, August 1995. So he went back to Kenya where he was, he was working before and he was assassinated there on 18th, 1998. Yes, but before he was, uh, he had been attacked by the, the assassins that's right. People forget he'd, uh, they'd actually already wounded him previous. Yes, previously, yes. And, uh, and Colonel uh, Lazindi had he, been uh, murdered. Yes, yes, yes. I think you are very well informed, yes. So, just imagine. And yet nothing has happened. There's no investigation about his death, but everybody will tell you he was killed by, by Kagame. This Kagame was killing other people, too. You know, he killed Patrick... Uh, Kajigeya in South Africa. Uh, he tried to kill Mr. Uh, how you call it, Faustin Yamwasa. Uh, he's trying to kill other people uh, in Rwanda. He tried to to kill me here in in, in Belgium. He he tried to kill other people, other people abroad. Mm -hmm. But what is astonishing, it's surprising us. The international community, so-called international community. I'm very sorry to say that. Yes has simply uh, tried to convince the entire world that Mr. Kagame is the best world leader, I mean, one of the worst world leaders, if not the best African leader, uh, to keep in power. Mm -hmm. uh, he, they don't care about crimes he has committed. Until, I have to underline this, to, co to make... Uh, Rwanda peacefully, they pretended to create an international tribunal mm -hmm. which had the mission to judge all people involved in the genocide in Rwanda. Hutu and Tutsis. Mm -hmm. Only Hutus were tried by that tribunal. No member, no one soldier no one political uh, leader coming from RPF was tried by that tribunal. Just imagine. Yes. One way, not both ways, of justice. And Mr. Kofi Annan, when this tribunal was set up, was there. When he was elected Secretary General, he was there. When this uh, uh, decision of uh, trying both sides was taken, he was there, he did not say anything. And I have to, to add this, I don't have to forget it. It was uh, just 1994, in September. Mr. Kofi Annan came to my office, I was Prime Minister then. He said, uh, you know, there's a, Mr. a gentleman called Gibson he has made a report. I just come here to beg you not to accept that report. 
I asked why. No, I simply ask you, don't listen to him. Because uh, that report, they, do have, they don't, does not have to be published. Hmm. I told him that I have already met Mr. Gerson, uh, who came to my office, and he told me that about 3,000 to about 40,000 people were killed by RPF in the eastern part of Rwanda, a place called Kibungo, and the surrounding areas. Mm -hmm. So I was frankly surprised to the advice given to me by Mr. Kofi Annan. And indeed, it ended up by sim simply stopping the report. This report was not published. As many other reports on the killing of RPF in Rwanda was not published. As the assassination of President Rabi Arimana, no investigation None. has been made by the United Nations. But remember, Mr. Aril was the first the prime minister, I think, in Lebanon. <laughs> when Mr. Yes. Aril was killed, mm -hmm. the international community was moved. And the United Nations took immediately the decision of making an investigation. But in my country, for any other reason, two presidents have been assassinated by RPF. Yes. We know that. RPF knows it. And Kagame confirmed once on uh, Hard Talk BBC interview that he has killed Abiy Arimana before Abiy Arimana killed him. Yes, he, no he said he's my enemy. I don't care. has been made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine the situation in which we are today? Yes. Um, a killer is in power. A killer is sanctified by the international community. Mm -hmm. Being appreciated as the best leader in the region. <laughs> by Blair you know, and Clinton. Uh, having a lot of prices. Being invited to the most important universities in the USA, Yale University, Harvard University, yes. <laughs> and many others. And of course, being entertained by some important uh, Jewish organizations in, in New York. I think the man is a saint. Mm -hmm. The man is a killer, and the man has to be punished, and he has to be investigated. Yes. That is my own conclusion. conclusion. Well, and as many join you. And by the way, we have to, and I, I want to mention a, an author. I know you appreciate the book, the recent book written by Judy uh, Reaver, Rever, uh, the, because she's a Montreal-based author. She worked for uh, uh, the French press for many years. She experienced the refugee crisis in uh, Tingi Tingi with uh, mainly Hutu refugees there who died in the thousands. Um, now, she's written a remarkable book. I'd like to know your thoughts about that book. Well, this book has been the best book I have ever read about what happened in this uh, area, I mean, in the region, and particularly what happened in Rwanda. Uh, some more writers have been trying to do better than her, but they could not. I think <laughs> she's the best. To have investigated a young lady, went to this tropical forest, he followed the refugees, he investigated in Rwanda, he invested in the different countries where refugees were living, and he made a tremendous job. And his book, frankly, let me tell you that I haven't read any book who can tell the truth. Mm -hmm. So he revealed the untold story about what happened in Rwanda. But unfortunately today, I haven't seen any reaction to what she has said, what she has written, you know. Mm. There are other writers, uh, Frenchmen, like Mr. Peyon. Mr. Peyon was not, has not been in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. He's the other one who told the truth about RPF. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, his government did not react. Other international community, I mean international organizations, did not react. And mm. no matter what will happen, the truth has been told. And nothing can tell that truth better than Judy Reva. Mm -hmm. This is what I say. Mm -hmm. Well, 
Yes, and I, uh, it, it, she documented with very close research and interviews with people uh, whom she produces with names, etc., who saw the killings in the Akagera, uh, and uh, she dealt with all the uh, myths and legends. It's, it's absolutely brilliant. I agree with you, Judy Rainbow. I hope people get the book. Um, and now, uh, there's another detail I want to make sure I ask you about. Uh, a f- gentleman that you met, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Gare- Philip Gurevich of the New Yorker magazine, who, in my view, has done a lot of harm because he's a great admirer of Paul Kagame and wrote books, uh, a book, a po- a largely uh, l- um, lionizing him. He tells a story of the famous uh, genocide facts. Uh, actually, I should tell our listeners the, the top of the facts sent by General Dallaire, Dallaire in January 1994 says uh, a request to uh, for assistance in uh, removing a uh, an informant from from Rwanda, something which it was totally impossible, totally outside his parameters of responsibility, etc. But uh, at any rate, that fax is used as the, supposedly the indicator of uh, what happened seven, six months later, three months later. Um, in telling the story, it begins with you, because he says, uh, Gurevich says that um, a very important person, he uses the letters VIP, and he's quoting Dallaire, uh, had uh, come to Dallaire to say that there is the, the info, there's an informant, and uh, that he should uh, he'll tell uh, you know the story of what's going on. Uh, the in my view, Gurevich is confusing people because my understanding is that you did not meet this so-called informant, and neither did General Dallaire. Can you talk about the the whole matter? Well, uh, I don't know what uh, expression I would use in English because uh, I will simply say that Mr. Gurevich is not honest because he knows once that he met me in the office. I told him the whole story. He did not mention anything in his book. It's the first book he he published. Mm-hmm. Second, I did not meet that gentleman who pretended that um, he has told the real story about what happened uh, to to our country. Mm-hmm. Uh, what has been told to Mr. Uh, Dallaire by the gentleman I indicated to him mm-hmm. has been put in a report, in a report I think he, Mr. Dallaire, I mean, he sent to the United Nations. Here also I have to be precise. Mr. Dallel did not really told me how the report, what was the content of the report. I don't remember, and I have not forget, forgotten anything. It is true. Mr. Dallel did ne- never show me or give me a copy confidentially of what he has sent to the United Nations. Mm-hmm. Thirdly, we have discovered that the so-called informer was simply a gentleman from RPF because his brother was once been a a kind of uh, mayor in Kigali after the so-called liberation of Rwanda by RPF. Mm -hmm. So this was the invented story. It It was untrue. And Mr. Gorivich was to use it to convince the internal I mean, the international community, all the world, that his first book was correct. Probably was correct to, to some issues, but his book was read just after the genocide, and everybody jumped to that book to to think that what he's telling in, in it was true, not at all. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know if I have answered your question quite okay. clearly, mm-hmm. but... Uh, I have not met the informer, and all the informer had uh, given to Mr. Dallet. But Dallet himself discovered that the, uh, I mean, uh, the guns were not to make. Uh, insuf- they were insufficient to pretend to prepare genocide. Yes. Let me just stop here. Uh, in some cases, uh, these kind of ideas, uh, remembering them, they make me 
uh, kind of frustrated and I don't know what to tell. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly, by the way, everyone knows that it's an... Amadou Dem, the captain who was who did actually meet him, uh, said that uh, the the kinds of arms they were talking about was rather common throughout the city of Kigali, which people were being assassinated. And I believe you have addressed that as well. That the RPF at that time, between January and April, were assassinating uh, people in in the city of Kigali. Yeah, they assassinated people, uh, including some politicians. And we were, you know, confused. We certainly must have said that they were assassinated by the Sabiarimana regime. No, they were assassinated by RPF. I can give an example. Uh, example of Mr. Gapisi, who was assassinated in 1993 by RPF. It, it is confirmed now. And then the assassination of the Minister of uh, Public Works, Mr. Katabazi, was assassinated by RPF, mm-hmm. and many other people were assassinated by RPF. Yes, and all parties were worried about their own security, of their people being safe when they traveled about, for fear of having that happen to them. Yes, because the RPF seems to have been allowed to be free, you know, mm-hmm. leaving the CND, I mean, yeah, CND places, as we, 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 we call it, where... We have uh, accepted that a battalion stayed in Kigali, RPF battalion stayed in Kigali. So they took civilians, uh, uh, I mean, uh, closer, they traveled all over the R- Rwanda, killing people mm-hmm. and putting them on, um, I mean, on, 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 on the opposition or uh, pretending that they have been killed by President Abjarimana. Let me mention this. Uh, it is very curious that uh, UNAMI was there to ensure security, and I don't see any security ensured by UNAMI. I'm very sorry to say that, mm-hmm. because uh, police and uh, some army officers were prevented to work uh, freely with their arms. Uh, I mean, uh, light arms, but uh, RPF was allowed to to have their arms and going around killing Rwanda. So it is a pity. The situation we were in it was really a normal. While we were under the umbrella of the United Nations, we did not know that all those crimes could be committed until. Our president is assassinated, and until the time of the genocide broke out. This mm-hmm. is a very sad story. As Rwandans, we have suffered a lot, and we continue to suffer by keeping the such kind of a killer man, a killer personality, as leader of our country. Yes. We have no consolation at all, particularly... In a very simple analysis of what has happened, the entire world will simply say Tutsi genocide took place in Rwanda, as if they have not been Hutus who were killed. While the international tribunal, which could have made it, which would have clarified the situation, kept silence as far as Hutus were concerned, and try to please RPF and to offer RPF a kind of world authority as far as the Rwandan situation is concerned. That is uh, it's just incredible. So we shall continue our fight to tell the truth. And we also thank all foreigners, mm-hmm. particularly young people like uh, Judy River. Mm-hmm who tried to clarify the situation. And we believe that in the future, those who are going to read what has happened in Rwanda will be astonished how our people have been uh, betrayed by the international community, including one of the African highest diplomats and decision-maker 
like uh, Mr. Kofi Annan, who, unfortunately, I have to repeat, were chosen to be a, a prize Nobel, Nobel winner. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. so, I can't tell all what I have on, in my heart, mm -hmm. but I think I have said what I could tell you by asking your question. Yeah. Well, certainly, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, you've done that, and we are very, very grateful. And I'm very glad you have a Twitter account. I find it extremely interesting. I urge people to follow you. And uh, thank you very, very much for talking to us today. Thank you very much, Mr. Tiller. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.